Many thanks to the organizers for having us here um, today with the presentation on Neoclassical's approach to space, period, and time. And actually, agents are also in there. Neoclassical started out with the idea of writing a global history for an aesthetic culture and its afterlife. So we had essentially very historical questions in mind, like what kinds of material artifacts they're usually visually associated with certain social groups in the 18th and 19th centuries? Can transformations that art history, material culture studies or design history claim to have happened be traced in large bodies of visuals? Is there a way to trace dissemination processes of forms and features? In Neoclassica, we develop methods and instruments to answer such questions by joining knowledge representation and knowledge discovery methods. I'm not going to elaborate on the data centered part. Suffice to say that we deal with multiple modi in a broad variety of sources, all available under permissive license. So far, we've been able to show that good classification results can be obtained on period visual material, even when trained with modern day visuals of historical artifacts. In the future, I'd like to take this work to a more general analysis of interior spaces. Corresponding with a top-down knowledge representation approach, Neoclassica provides an ontology that represents a neoclassical artifacts their constructional and aesthetic features, and that is compatible with CDOC CRM and linked to widely used thesauri, such as the Getty vocabularies. The terms are based in period semantics. They both accommodate the history of a particular concept, including scholarly modern domain, modern domain usage, and they are cross-culturally cross distinctive. To the right, you can see this exemplified by the note of a seminar. In the beginning, we focused more on the taxonomic part of the ontology that was required for the knowledge discovery part, namely object segmentation in visuals. More recently, focus has returned to the effort of actually modeling objects and their environment. At the moment, these are still comparably early stage considerations, yet we would like to share with you both these considerations and an example of the expressivity of the ontology. We're seeing here a planter or a jardinier created in Britain between 1810 and 1820. This can be represented via CDOC CRM as a production event, here visualized in dark red. All light lilac classes and their relations come from the neoclassic ontology. For each part of the artifact, we can define such a production event independently in order to separately identify material, here in green, and technique, here in yellow, or different points of coming into existence if this information is available. We can say, for instance, that a foot is made from brass and that the technique used to create that foot was casting. We can do so, obviously, for all the parts constituting the artifact. For materials like mahogany or brass, as well as for techniques like casting and gilding, we link directly to the Getty vocabularies, namely the arts and architectural thesaurus. That is all fine and dandy, you might say, but artifacts don't produce themselves and our place is really so straightforward, like the modeling here seems to suggest, and right you would be. In our current usage scenario, we process and accommodate legacy data, such as this jardinier, described as being made in Britain. But what is Britain? One might be tempted to model this geographically as the British Isles, but is that really what is meant here? we find it far more feasible that what is meant is actually a slice of culture. As a matter of fact, art history has traditionally used the concept of style that designates both time and space, as well as aesthetic forms, and that is often intentionally vague. Think of concepts like Biedermeier, Regency, Chardis, Burgerlich Empire, and the like. 
art historians nowadays often shy away from such con conceptualizations, for rightly, their power to enforce a canon has been critiqued. However, this won't solve the problem of legacy data. Our suggestion is hence to turn this particular way of ascribing spaces and dates into an explicit representation through the practice of modeling. For instance, the time-space slice of Britain from 1810 to 1820 in our planned example is very well expressed by the concept of the Regency that comprises the Regency of George, Prince of Wales, as well as his reign as George IV. CDOC CRM offers the instruments to make such modeling choices by assigning a spatial projection to the production event as a place. It does so by providing in particular the period class comprising, quote, sets of coherent phenomena or cultural manifestations occurring in time and space. This class may have the property it took place at to record the actual place and a wide variety of time-related properties. Additionally, it provides the inherited property has spatial projection, enabling a period to be used as a place identification. CDOC-CRM allows for a period to fall into another period via the consists of or spatiotemporally overlaps with relationships. Thus, we could, for instance, model Regency as a part of the period United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland that lasted from 1801 to 1922. Such a modeling may actually be highly desirable because we can avoid that one hegemonic notion of temporality, usually a Western one, colonizes other notions of temporality. We can hence have different overlapping notions of Biedermeier for different territories. So, how are we going to address the question of creators involved in a production event? Once more, things are probably not as straightforward as one might assume. That is mainly due to only a minority of artifacts being crafted by a single person. Usually, artifacts come from a workshop employing multiple people or are even assembled from parts made by multiple workshops. For instance, the workshop of Maître Broncier Pierre-Philippe Tomil might have created the bronze fittings for a furniture designed and built at the workshop of Maître Béniste François-Honoré Georges Jacob de Molter. Reference, however, is quite regularly given to the artist rather than the workshop. Once more, we rely on CDOC CRM's capabilities to represent such relations. As we want to represent the workshop, we have to extend CDOC CRM by defining at least one class, namely workshop. This workshop has a location. To define that place, we need again the period spatial projection construct we used for Britain to A define the various phases of existence of a workshop and b, provide a geographical location in the case of Jacob the Younger, the famed locality in the Rue Mesli. The workshop can then be linked with the produced object via ZDOC properties such as carried out by. Finally, the head of workshop can be modeled as a person connected to the workshop via the newly defined headed by relationship. In this presentation, we have introduced Neoclassica, a project for analyzing neoclassical artifacts that provides formal semantic, semantics, pardon me, and object detection in visuals. We've presented two modeling problems that we face due to integration of legacy data and our solution either by either adhering to standards such as CDOC CRM or by subtly extending them. This concerns both spatial temporal slices and actors that intersect in production events of artifacts. We see the advantages of such an approach, firstly, in supporting access to existing bodies of knowledge, and secondly, in making the practice of object attribution 
more transparent and accountable as the concepts are now formally represented. Thank you very much for your kind attention.